And so I want today just to kind of talk a little bit about not wasting our life. It is so easy to waste our life. And I see so many people, and I'm sure you do the same, see people squandering their life, not making the most of the opportunities that are presented to them, and to live with deep regret as a result of that. And so I don't want you to waste your life. I want your life to have meaning. I want you to make the very best of every moment that God gives you so that you can excel in your life. You can be a success and be a success that actually is not just based on something fleeting, but actually has longevity to it. And so there are really only three questions that matter in life. And the first one is, what does God want me to do? And what will it take for me to do that? And why should I do it? Those are three key questions that are for us. Ephesians chapter 5, um, starting at verse 15, says this, Be careful how you live, not as fools, but as those who are wise. Make the most of most opportunities. I'm just checking your reading. Making the most of every opportunity for doing good in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but try to understand what the Lord wants you to do. In other words, God's saying, don't be careless about the way that you live. Don't, don't just kind of live haphazardly. Don't live without thoughtlessly, but actually live with purpose in every step. God wants us to be wise, and as it says there, he wants us to make the most of every opportunity. And, but this is the part that I feel is so important, that he says, try to understand what the Lord wants you to do. How many here would like to know what the Lord wants you to do? Yes? Many of us, not all of us, obviously, I can see that. <laughs> For those of you who don't want to know, you are wasting your time here. <laughs> yes, you're in the wrong building. <laughs> yes. This isn't Pizza Hut and it isn't uh, whatever. Um, this is a place where we want to know what God's will is for our life. And so you are in the right place if you want to know what God's will is for your life. And over the next six weeks, we are going to unpack that and look at the purposes that God has for our life. What does God want us to do and to be in our life? And so you couldn't have come to church at a better time than at this season to know why God wants us to be doing what he wants us to do. We get to know the what and the why and the how. So I think that's so important. So today is just an intro to next week's official intro, okay, into the, into the, uh, into the series. And... So what I want today is I want us to, I'm going to talk a little bit about what God is wanting for us, but I want us to really to, to spend some time together having communion, because it's through communion that's going to prepare us and launch us into what God has for us in the next six or seven weeks. Amen? Amen. So the basic questions that we ask are these, and the first one is, what does God want? What does God want? I think that's a, it's an important thing. Well, it is if you're a Christian. If you're not a Christian, then obviously it's of no importance to you. But to, but to those of you that have decided to say yes to Jesus, or you're contemplating saying yes to Jesus, and you're thinking, but what's involved in it? Well, then I'm going to let you know what's involved so that you, there's no hidden agenda. You can know because God wants you to know what he wants from you. Yes? He's not trying to hide it. He's not, he's, he's, uh, he's not trying to do what, uh, what parents do at Christmas with the Christmas presents, keep them hidden. Um, he wants you to know 
what is in store. And so, in a nutshell, a nutshell, um, God wants your whole life. I've said it. Okay. I don't know how you feel about that, but he wants it all. Everything. Absolutely everything. Now, if that doesn't scare you, <laughs> because for, for all of us, that is the issue. When people say, but what is that going to do? What is God going to do? Because if he takes my life and he wants all of me, what does that mean? So it's important for us, first of all, to understand the, the, what God wants. And he wants everything. And Romans 6 verse 13 says this, give yourselves completely to God since you have been given new life and use your whole body as a tool to do what is right for the glory of God. There is no verse in the Bible that says a Christian can do whatever they want. It's just not in there. And it always amazes me to listen to people because if the best thing you can do to know what's in someone's heart is to listen to what they say. So when someone says something to you, it reveals what's in their heart. Yes? So in other words, if you ask somebody, would you do such and such? So if I was to ask you today and to say, would you serve in kids' ministry? Yes, your response would reveal your heart. Yes, it would reveal whether, yes, that's something you wanted to do. It would reveal whether that's something you're willing to do. It would reveal whether that's something that God has already been speaking to you about. You might talk about that. It would reveal a lot of things in you just by asking a question. Yes, and it never fails to amaze me that when people... And particularly if you think about it, when pastors ask people to do things and their answer is, well, as long as I'm not going out of my way. Or I'm busy. Yes, or whatever it might be, there's a myriad, and I'm going to come on to those in a while, okay? We come up with excuses, kind of, don't we? Now, the thing is, is so often where our struggle lies is who's going to be number one in our life or what's going to be the most important thing in our life. What is, what is it that we are going to prioritize above everything else? Because you can't have everything as a number one. There's only one that can be number one, yes? Because then you can have a number two and a number three. You can have a number of others, but you can never have more than one number one and one priority. And so whenever there are things that take the place of God, when the other things are a priority, whether that's money or family or career, uh, education, uh, you know, whatever it might be, if that comes first in your life, in other words, that's your priority, and for many people it's sports, for many people it's going to the gym, for many people it's, it's their hobbies, uh, for many people it's kind of travel, it could be all sorts of things that people have. Now, not any of them are wrong. God isn't saying you shouldn't have money, you shouldn't have a holiday, and you shouldn't have sport, and you shouldn't be healthy. And you, He's not saying any of that. But what he is saying is, you should make me number one. You should make me the priority. So that everything else, your family, understands that I'm first. In your relationship with your marriage, I'm first. In your finances, I'm first. In your job, I'm first. In your friendships, in your neighbours, in your club that you're a part of, wherever it might be, it's not a case of that comes first. And the amount of times I find people that they'll go to clubs and do things in place of doing something for God. You see, God need, will always challenge where you're at. And you've got to realise that if there's any areas of your life that are not fully under the lordship of Christ, you're going to have a problem in that area. You're going to struggle with that area. You can either feel guilty about it or whatever. You're never going to be a success in it because you can't have anything more than one that's going to be a number one. Now, <clears throat> Jesus actually talks to a guy and uh, he says to him, 
will you follow me? And the guy says, yes, I'll follow you. But first, let me... And there's three of them. They do three things and that. So the first one says, Lord, let me first... Let me first... Absolutely, yes. So you know it, don't you? So, Lord, let me first... And, and, and that's what I think, think is quite interesting is the first one is, first let me, I've just bought a field, I need to go and have a look at it. As if the field's going to change all of a sudden. Do you know what I mean? Like something's suddenly urgent. Another one is, is, well, I've just got married. So the wife becomes the issue. Now, God's not saying don't get married, and he's not saying the wife shouldn't be a priority, um, ex unless exceptions, no. <laughs> uh, but, but, but seriously, it, it is an issue that we know that our spouse is important to us. But he or she needs to come second to God. And that's what God is wanting as for, us, for us to understand. And so we shouldn't be having this thing about family first, or career first, or work first or whatever it might be. Proverbs 3 and verse 6 says this, in everything you do, put God first, and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. I don't know anybody who doesn't want to be a success. And the key, the secret to being a success is in this verse. Put God first. Amen? Amen. You see, God doesn't bless things that he's not number one in. He doesn't think, I'm going to bless your marriage if he's not number one in your marriage. He's not going to bless your career unless he's first in it. He's not going to bless any ministry that you're involved in unless he's first. God needs to be first. He has determined that. So God wants our own life. Secondly, what will it take? Well, it takes something that, again, if I mention this word, you may gasp with horror. Because it's something that we don't like. It's something that we often try everything we can to avoid. Yes, we try to kind of uh, do anything so that we are not kind of being involved with this. Now, we will often get involved with it. And we, get, we will do this in every area of our life where we want to be a success in that area. And if we want to be a success with God and for him to make us a success in each of our areas of our life, we need to implement this. And this is, what does God say that we need? We need to be disciplined. We need to have self-control. We need, I think the point is delayed gratification. In other words, you will do something now because you know that later it will be of benefit. So that's what, that's what happens. We, we will maybe, we will save today because in the future we want to be able to have some savings to retiring. We'll save now because we want to be able to buy a house later. That is the essence of, of delayed gratification. We will study hard now. We will not go out to play. We will not do some of the things that we want to do because of what we see in the future, what we would like to achieve, what we would like to have, and what we would like to be. And so in order for us to give our life to God, we have to be disciplined. And we have to be disciplined in each area of our life. Proverbs 10 and verse 17 says, whoever practices discipline is on the way to life. God's discipleship includes discipline, the two go hand in hand, lead to life and life more abundantly. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 says this, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. Yes? What does that mean? It means discipline yourself means that you're going to do some things that enable you to hear from God, to know what God wants in your life, and to be able to be spiritually in tune with God. So you're going to read your Bible. Well, in order to do that, for some of you, you're busy and you think, well, how am I ever going to be able to, uh, to read my Bible? 
Well, the only way you're going to do it is maybe is you have to get up 10 minutes earlier in order to do that. Some of you, it might be, because some of you, I can tell from your phenomenal physiques that you love to go to the gym and your kind of exercise, you love that. Maybe for you, instead of doing four hours at the gym, you cut down to three hours and 50 minutes. <laughs> what I'm saying is you can't keep adding to your schedule. Yes, you can't just keep adding. You've got to eliminate something. And it's amazing how many times people we can say, so over these next few weeks, we're going to be doing some extra things. That's why we want you to buy the book. We want you to do a daily devotional on the subjects that we're doing. There'll be some memory verses that we want you to learn. We want you to talk about it in your connect group, and we want you to live it out. Now, you can't do that by keeping on with a busy, busy life. You have to cut some things out in order to bring your devotional in. You have to cut some things out in order to memorize the, the, the verses that we have and some of the things that we talk. So in other words, if you want to, if you want to learn to trust God um, in, in some area of your life, it's going to require you to change some things around. And of course, we talked about that last week, didn't we? Mark Miller talked about that and he talked about stepping out of the boat. Um, and so for some of you, it's about doing something maybe that you've not done before, but you've got to make some time for it. You've got to make a way. And so it's really important for us to do that. So in order to grow, you have to say no. In order to grow, you have to learn to say no. Now, for some of you, it might be cutting down on television. So instead of watching friends, you go to connect group and make friends. <laughs> Which is the better? Watching TV, being isolated, and you feel, you know, at the end of it, it's doing nothing, where you can go to your connect group and you can have some influence, you can have some impact. You can be, instead of thinking about what others are, you can be a blessing, you can be a minister in that. I think when we go to something, we should, it's how we present ourselves, how we go. You can go to Connect Group and think, oh, what a miserable bunch. <laughs> now, maybe your group is, but anyway. <laughs> but, but all I'm saying is, is, you could go with life. Yeah. Yes? And you could bring vibrancy. Why not? I mean, just imagine if you prayed before you went. <sighs> the thought of that. Can you imagine a church where everybody prayed for the people in their connect group before they met the connect group and went with a word from God for each member in the connect group? I just wonder what would happen. Yeah. <laughs> Must be time to sow. <laughs> All I can say, I was going to flap. <laughs> We can't just, we've got to understand that when we belong to God, everything about us should breathe God. Yeah. And I know we all think, well, we, you know, we're not perfect. And, and I'm certainly not perfect by any means of the imagination. And if you're not convinced about that, have a word with Kath after 32 years of marriage to see what she thinks about my flaws. <laughs> But the issue is, is that constant progression to say, I'm not satisfied with the way I am and that God requires everything. So for me and for you is to require what is God wanting next? What is it that God is looking for for me to do? What can I bring of God? You should be carrying the presence of Christ with you. And I want to say to you, I am not going to try and convince you to be in a connect group if you don't want to be in a connect group. I'd rather you stayed at home. And in fact, God would rather you stayed at home rather than being a negative influence on the other group. Because yeah. he's looking for men and women of faith, men and women who bring hope into a situation, people who will love people. Do you love God? Do you love people? And do you love life? Because that's what God's looking You know, I know sometimes I shout a bit. Occasionally, and I do get into trouble for it. And I do, before I get up, I say, Jonathan, if you do, just stay calm. And then I get up and I, I think I've done it again, done it again. <laughs> when am I going to learn? When am I going to learn? 
Anyway, you haven't got long to put up with me. <laughs> you, will, you will think to yourself, well, faith will be here soon. Don't you worry about it. But one of the things I see is I see people under self-imposed pressure all the time. Nobody is holding a gun to your head. Nobody is making you the way you are. You are what you are because of the way you've lived your life, your habits, your disciplines, the, the, the spiritual exercises or non-spiritual exercises that you're doing will determine who and what you are. So don't tell me, God, you have me, and then you don't put time to read your Bible. Don't tell me, Lord, I am all yours, and then you don't talk about Jesus. I think for me, one of the things is, is, is like, for example, Wednesday night, we have Alpha, and the amount of people in this church that have come to Alpha is very small in comparison to how many is here today. And that, all that can say to me is, no, I'm not, I'm not the brightest cookie in the drawer, in, in, in the jar, yeah? Is it a jar or a drawer? Whatever you like, okay? <laughs> Draw's big eating of the sun, you know I'm really really at the at the bottom. You can just get you're scratching the bottom there. In fact, so much so I forgot what I was gonna say. Alpha. Alpha. I was on Alpha, wasn't I? I now for, for many of us we've been on Alpha and we come on it every single time. But we don't come on it because we've nothing else to do. We come on it because the people that we have invited could turn up. And some of the people that we've invited that have said no might turn up. Some of the people who have said that they will definitely be there might not turn up. But if they do turn up, whoa, what if I'm not there? So that just tells me if you're not there, you're not inviting. And if you're not inviting, how can you say, God, I'm all yours? My mouth's not yours, is it? Because I'm not talking to people about, about you. I'm not telling people that I love Jesus. I'm not telling me that I go to church. I'm not telling people how you have changed my life. I'm not telling people that when I, when I, have, I, I have given to God that he has blessed my finances. I am giving a testimony about in my marriage. And my marriage was on the rocks. And, and how when I came to Jesus, he changed everything. What I'm saying is it should outlive. We should be a constant testimony to those who do not know Jesus. It speaks volumes of how much we love Jesus because Jesus loves the lost. He is passionate about people who don't know him. He is he, so passionate, and this is my third point, is the reason why we should give God first place and the reason why we do the disciplines is because of the cross. It's all because of the cross. So when I say to you, get to Connect Group, you should go, I want to be there because of the cross. When we talk to you about giving and, and, and being generous, you should say, if there's any area you want to be generous in, it should be the kingdom of God. I want to expand. Lord, I love you. Here's all my money because he owns it all. And that's one of the things that Jesus talked to the rich young ruler. And for many of us, we've got, done well in our finances. And, and God says to us as well, go sell everything you have and give it all away. You see, Jesus knows what's, what is in your life that's stopping you from giving him all. And I don't know what it is in you, but you need to know. What is it in your life that's stopping you being what God wants you to be? What's stopping you from witnessing? What's stopping you from reading your Bible? What's stopping you from hearing from God? What's stopping you from being involved in a ministry? What's stopping you from being involved in the kids' work or the youth work or the catering? What's, in, what's, what's stopping you being in the prayer ministry? What's stopping you being involved in the tech or the singing? Well, maybe singing if you can't sing. But, like me, uh, that's maybe out. But, but all I'm saying is he's trying to say, Lord, what's for me? Now, if you like me, you probably, and I, I, I would say many a time, I would, I mean, like with kids' work, when we did kids' work in Glasgow, I would have never put myself down as a kids' worker. And you're all thinking, neither would I. <laughs> but actually, I loved it. Yeah? 
And, and, and we, we had a great kids' work because it became the passion of my life. Why? Because I could see children's lives changed. And that's why I'm passionate about children. That's what I, that, that, I feel, is, is one of the greatest thing, ministries that you can be involved in, is seeing little lives changed and become transformed. That's why, as parents, our greatest ministry is with our children, seeing our children brought up in the kingdom of God. Amen. So it's the cross. I want us to take communion just as we, as we think about this. It's because of the cross. In other words, if Jesus never did anything else for you, yeah, no more blessings, no more things, no, nothing at all, he has already done enough for you to give him everything because he gave you everything. He gave you his son and, his, and Jesus gave his life so that you and I could have life. We have eternity because of the cross. And so I want us just to, to take the bread and to take, the, uh, and to take the, the, uh, the, the juice, and we're going to take it in remembrance of who he is. This is, this is about, about you and me saying it's the cross. It's because of what Jesus has done on the cross. Everything else comes into that. Nothing else in life matters if Jesus, it's like we heard on Alpha on about the C.S. Lewis's quote, you know, if uh, one thing that Christianity cannot be is moderately important. It is either of infinite importance if it's true or it is of absolutely no importance if it's wrong. But what it cannot be is mediocre. And so for you and I this morning, the issue is, and the question we need to ask ourselves is, is Christ real? Is, do I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me so that I could know him, so that I could be forgiven my past, so that I could have power to live for today, so that I can have a future in heaven with him? That's the question that for, for each of us. I want us to... To, to, to take, our, um, take our bread, if you can get into it. We ought to have a competition, didn't we? See who can get in first. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, have I beat you? No, nope, you're all laughing at me. Jesus said this to us. He said, while they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let's take the bread, shall we, and let's eat it. And let's remember as we do that Jesus loves us, that the Father, God the Father, loves us. And I want you to think about that as you take the, he broke his body. Every, every bone was out of joint. Excruciating pain crown of thorns, whipped on his back. He's, he, was, he was nailed to the cross because of his love for you. On the cross, Jesus' blood was shed for us for the forgiveness of sins because of his blood that flowed. 
you and I are free. You and I are able to know life. The blood of Jesus, when it flowed, it, it brought a healing to all who would accept him. By his stripes, we are saved. By his stripes, you and I, because of the cross, we are able to know his forgiveness. Today, maybe, as we take this, maybe you're here and you're saying, I've never said yes to Jesus. And I want to believe today. I want to say yes to Jesus. I want to give my life to God. Now is a great opportunity for you just to pray. Pray a simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you, Jesus, that you came. I thank you that you were willing to suffer and to die so that I could know true life. I thank you for the cross because my sins are forgiven. I thank you, Lord, that the times when I've done things that I shouldn't have done, that you forgive me. I thank you that you forgive me for the things that I've said that I shouldn't have said. And I thank you, Lord, that you help me to live today and forever by the power of the Holy Spirit so that I can live out, Lord, the dream that you're putting in my heart. I thank you that you've got a plan for my life. I thank you that your purposes are there for me to run after. May my life count. May my life be a success in your eyes. Lord, I dream today for you to say to me one day, to look into my eyes and to say, well done, you good and faithful servant. Let's take the juice. We're going to close in a song. But I want through this song for us just to stay in an attitude of prayer. And maybe you want to kneel as an act of saying, Lord, today I am all yours. And when you say, I'm all yours, I can guarantee that it will change your life. When you encounter Jesus, when you meet with Jesus, when you see Jesus, when you understand the cross, when you understand his love for you, his kindness, his generosity, his extravagance, then you understand that whatever you give him is nothing in comparison to what he has done and given you. Let's spend some moments just thanking God for who he is and what he's done. And in preparation, preparing a heart, saying, Lord, this week help me to prepare my heart for this new series so that, Lord, that I can make the most out of this series. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would do that today. I pray that for every single person here and those watching online and for those that have not been able to make it today, I pray, Lord Jesus, that, 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 Lord, that you would prepare every heart and every mind and every life. I pray, Lord Jesus, that today you would set the dream, your dream in our hearts of seeing a church that is fully devoted to following Jesus all the days of our life.